there, it's Nancy Crawford here with the Creative Commitment blog and today's kind of an exciting day because I'm going to be doing the prize draw for the five encaustic pieces of artwork that I'm giving out as prizes based on the, the feedback that you provided me on things that you want to see happen in that creative space and topics that you'd like to see explored and so forth. So first of all, I wanted to let you know how humbled I was by the, the outpouring of comments and the feedback uh, that I received on the blog. It was just awesome. And one of the greatest passions really of my life is to not only be a creator myself, but to help other artists and individuals identify their own unique voice, to figure out the ideas that are most, expo uh, most important for them to express and then help them figure out a way to do that in a really authentic and meaningful way. So to hear how some of the resources that I've provided have helped people with that is really awesome. I'm also probably most excited about the potential of this amazing group of individuals. Even from the percentage of people that I heard back from, and we've got about 200 responses that came in both as comments on the blog, they came in as emails to me or private messages, um, a few Facebook comments, and uh, so what I've done, I printed all of those and they're in here, and we're going to be doing the draw for that in just a minute. But I thought before I get to the draw, I wanted to talk a little bit about the responses that came in to let everybody know how this creative community, this global group of creatives is, is shaping up because I think it's super exciting. Um, so when I mentioned that it is an international group of people, um, so I myself is, am a Canadian. I live just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. So there were five different provinces and one territory, um, artists from those different areas that, that commented back on the blog. In terms of our American neighbors, there were artists from 13 different states, and these were people that identified where they were from. So coming from everywhere from Alaska to Florida, California to North and South Carolina. So that's really cool. In addition to North American um, countries, there were respondents from Australia and New Zealand, lots of people from the, that area of the world, which is awesome. Someone from India, Spain, the United Kingdom, Italy, the Republic of Panama, and Germany. So that's really exciting to see that we're really getting influences from all over the world, and that's, that's really awesome. Again, some people identified their age in the comments that they sent in. So from that data, there's people anywhere from 17 to 73. We have both men and women that are on, on this creative blog, although it seems from the respondents, the, the males are only about 10% right now. So uh, we need to get a few more guys involved here. Then of course, as you might imagine, most of the people that responded are visual artists in, in some manner. So when people sent in comments about the work that they were doing, I just kept a growing list. So we've got printmakers, photographers, glass artists, encaustic painters, collage artists, calligraphers, paper makers and book binders, ceramic artists, art therapists, uh, lots of textile and fabric artists who identified themselves as weavers, knitters, sewers, quilters and felters. Of course, lots of painters, everything from watercolor, oil, acrylic and mixed media, web design and graphic design, uh, a couple of stained glass artists, lots of people that are including drawing as part of their practice and as the finished product, working with both traditional and non-traditional materials, sculptors, um, people who do um, and are really excited about art journaling, um, a couple of animators, two people that say that they're mosaic artists, so that's really neat, uh, jewelry designers, a basket maker, and uh, a number of art teachers. So. You can see we've got a really diverse cross-section of visual artists who responded, which I think is awesome because the opportunity for sharing across those art fields is awesome. And then we've got a number of people that are working in other creative fields, such as 
people who would describe themselves as writers and poets, musicians, and a chef. So again, the opportunity for cross-fertilization across arts areas and sharing across disciplines, I think, is really awesome. Now, I certainly don't have all the answers to the questions that you brought up about topics and, and things that you're interested in learning about, but one of the great things is, is that I have a vast network of artist and designer friends who I'm connected to, and a lot of people who are in my kind of network and close acquaintances who I consider to be very highly creative and interesting dynamic people and I'll certainly be picking their brains and sharing what they have to say about some of the questions and topic ideas that you brought up. In addition to the the topics that I had mentioned that I was planning on doing I collected two pages of topics that you brought up of things that you'd like to see happening on this blog that I hadn't even thought of or mentioned. So um, things that came up that were, you know, really seem to be important to a lot of people is areas around sketchbook use. So do I keep a sketchbook? Um, how do I use that as part of my creative process? A lot of people were very interested in the whole notion of getting feedback and critique and really saw the value in getting that and were interested in being part of a, a community or a group where there was going to be sharing of artworks and and some kind of feedback. Um, everything from dealing with self-doubt, uh, how do you work with procrastination. This one I thought was neat. Um, a couple of people mentioned that they were traveling and wanted to keep up their artistic practice so any tips or ideas around how do you keep doing things when you're on the road. Uh, of course, people are interested in promoting and how to sell their artwork or how do you approach galleries. And of course, that comes after you've created a very powerful and unified series of artworks. And what really excited me about that is a lot of people seem to be very interested and wanting more information about how do you develop an idea from that kind of spark of an idea or something that's just kind of, you know, floating around in your mind. How do you translate that into a series of artworks and create visual unity, create power, take people on basically your artistic journey? And that happens to be an area of specialization for me and an area that I'm super passionate about. So there's really great alignment there, which I'm excited about. So as I say, lots of tremendous ideas. This is just a wealth of information um, that I've been able to, to gather from you. So thank you so much for that. Okay, so without further ado, let's do this draw. Okay, so our first winner is Diane Ostiek. Diane Ostiek. And on this, I'm not sure where she's from, um, but with all of the uh, winners today, of which there's going to be five people, what I'll do is email you and get your mailing address so I can send you those pieces of art. So that's Diane Ostiek. First one. Second winner. This is Trudy Gaudio or maybe Trudy Godot. Um, again, I'm just trying to see. Doesn't mention in here where she's from, but congratulations, Trudy. Two down, still three to go. Third one, this is Kim. And Kim is from Northwest Philadelphia. So congratulations, Kim. Two more. This one is Deb Williams. And Deb is from New Zealand. So that piece of encaustic is going to be traveling a good distance. So congratulations, Deb Williams. Last one.
Larry Malpin. And Larry is from, I believe he's from Texas. It doesn't say on here, but I know that um, Larry has, um, was inspired by the Love and Gratitude project that I did, and he did one of his own. So that was very exciting. He reached out and contacted me about that. And so congratulations, Larry. You'll be expecting something in the mail soon. So congratulations to all of our winners. And um, so I mentioned that just before I was gonna wrap up this video, I wanted to provide you with some content um, based on some of the questions that I had. So I thought I'd deal, just touch on the whole notion of sketchbooks. And definitely sketchbooks are a, a huge part of my artistic practice. And I have sketchbooks that I have that I keep in the studio that help me with the projects and things that I'm working on. And then I have sketchbooks that are more for travel and for working on location or having in my purse or bag. So the first thing is for sketchbooks that I keep in my studio, one of the things that I like to have is I like to use sketchbooks where I can open them up and they go perfectly flat. So you've got a very large drawing surface to work on. This is also great for travel because if you think of it, you've got a nice large surface to work on and because they open completely flat, you can sort of use it on your lap like a drawing board, which is, which is really handy. Um, the only thing I find is that sometimes if I'm traveling, I don't want anything this large because I'm carrying it all day either on my you know, back as a, a backpack and usually I have my camera gear with me as well. So it, it gets to be a bit weighty. So usually the sketchbooks that I use when I'm traveling are smaller than this, but I really love this quality. Of course, they look nice and thin when I buy them. They look like this, uh, but then when I work with them, they end up looking like this. Um, but one of the things that I also do is I end up labeling my sketchbooks on the spine. So you can see this is a sketchbook that I use to document a lot of things that I'm doing around encaustic work. So it might be, you know, notes that I'm taking and this is just tape from uh, an encaustic project. I might be trying out some different techniques and and uh, putting them in there. It might be coming up with compositional ideas and doing some sketches and design work that way. And I'll certainly be doing a more thorough um, blog post and video actually on sketchbook use, but I did want to address something today um, that people seem to be quite interested in. So having a sketchbook and using this to flesh out all my ideas, to build up how I'm going to work with a topic or idea to contain all my research around particular ideas is really important to me. You can see here in this shot of one of my bookcases, you see a number of the topics that I'm using and I've got those indexed on the side of the sketchbook. So if I'm working on a particular series, I can just grab that sketchbook and I've got all that information right there. And because I tend to work in series, that's a system or approach that's really worked well for me. When I'm traveling though, I tend to work with smaller sketchbooks. So you can see here, these are much smaller than the sketchbooks that I use in my studio. And of course, again, they start off very small, but they end up being very large because when I'm traveling, I also like to use this as a place to store all sorts of, you know, it might be maps, it might be business cards of a great restaurant that I went to or a good hotel that we stayed at, things like that. So there are real, you know, documentation of the places we've been and what we've been doing. Again, I label those things on the side. So you can see this was Ireland and Scotland, July 2008. This was Mexico, Seattle and California. So there's three different, different trips that are in there. This was a little Italy sketchbook. I really like my travel sketchbooks, most importantly, to have this kind of strap that goes around them because it helps me keep all that stuff contained. One of the things that I love about the moleskin books for traveling is that you've got the pocket in the back. So when I'm out during the day, I can just keep grabbing things and throw them into that pocket. And then in the evening, usually if I'm having 
dinner or after dinner, I can glue things in, I can write about it, I can sketch around it, do different things that way. When I've used um, coil-bound sketchbooks to inventory those, so if I'm trying to locate something quickly, I just put little tags on the side and hang it on the side. So I've got a, a bookcase of these kind of travel journals and books. The, um, I try not to buy the coil-bound sketchbooks anymore. And the reason why I don't is what I find is when I have those open and you know, it's awkward for my hand to cross over these kinds of things, the, that big coil. So I'm, I'm not as crazy about those as I am the books that go flat. Um, but a lot of people really like these, so I think it also comes down to a personal preference sort of thing. You can also get into really specialty sketchbooks. Let's say you're going and wanting to do a watercolor focus in an area, so you can get sketchbooks that are made of you know, specialty papers like watercolor paper or, you know, different surfaces and supports. And again, that's something I'm going to look at a little bit more in that blog post about sketchbooks. And I'll also do a separate post about traveling and keeping your art practice going. So thanks again, everyone, for, for participating in that call out, for responding with your ideas, your suggestions and your gratitude for this space. As I said, I'm really excited about the potential, I think, of this group of creatives to share ideas, to support one another, and to encourage each other in our creative endeavors. And that's really what it's all about. So thanks.